Hi, welcome to episode 16 of Cougars on Cougars. We have a really exciting Cougars fan segment coming up. Uh, we had the draft happen, lots going on, but we are going to start with our quote of the week. This comes from Pat Summit, who was the women's basketball coach for Tennessee. Mm-hmm. She won eight national titles. She's pretty amazing. Kind of a big deal. Yeah. She says, you can't always be the most talented person in the room, but you can be the most competitive. <laughs> Which I think for summer workouts, both football and basketball, that's going to be true for a lot of those guys. They might not be the most talented, but they can sure work really hard. Yes, and speaking of people who are more talented and competitive, we are going to jump into our segment about the draft. And for us, we had one player get actually drafted, and that was Bronson Kafusi. And man, did he work hard. Yeah. And man, is he talented. So he got taken by the Ravens very early in the third round. He was the 70th pick overall. Uh, so he will be playing in Baltimore. And uh, he shared on Instagram. He said, here we go. Can't wait to get to work. So. Congrats to Bronson. Yes. That's pretty exciting. Way to represent BYU, too. It's mm-hmm. the only player actually drafted. Drafted, yes. But we had some other players that signed mm-hmm. deals. Mm-hmm. So the first one up was Manoa Pakula signed a deal with the Green Bay Packers. Yes. Which we know a lot of you are Green Bay Packers fans. We do know some Packer fans, so that's uh, really fun for them. He's good. Uh, Riker Matthews um, is going to be playing for the Saints. He signed an undrafted free agent deal with them. Mitch Matthews was our other player that we thought maybe would be drafted. Yeah, I thought thought we might see him go late. Yeah, but he signed as a free agent with the Chiefs. Andy Reid. And Alex Smith, not to mention... He had a yeah, really funny um, Twitter and Instagram post where he said, going to be wearing red and catching passes from a Ute. Ready, go Chiefs. So uh, that'll be a change for him, but we hope to see him do well. Yeah, hopefully they can work together pretty well. So, yeah, we really did have that tweet of all the guys who signed. Yeah, there Graham, was, Graham yeah, Valley was the other one mm-hmm. that signed, or he was signed to a, the Packers rookie camp. So Yeah. I'm not sure, like, the ins and outs of the lingo. I think it is a little bit different than um, being an undrafted free agent. Right, I think um, it's just a trial. Like, he gets to, yeah, he gets to go try out for him. Uh, but he was one of our defensive ends, and it's nice to see him getting a shot. Another person in that same situation is Taryn Houck. He's going to be given a mini camp um, tryout opportunity with the Chicago Bears. So if he makes it, he'll be playing with a Paulo So I know, I hope he makes it. I like Taryn Houck a lot. <laughs> yeah, gosh, and he's so good. You know the person that I was – Hoping would get a shot, but we didn't see get a shot yet, is Devon. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, cute. Um, get Devon. Yeah. Okay. Unrelated, so we're done with BYU players, so those are all your BYU <laughs> players getting a shot, but we thought this was kind interesting enough. <laughs> yeah, Jake keeps tweeted out today that he's officially a Seattle Seahawks. So yes. it says, truly a dream come true and blessing to play for my hometown. Yes, so he was with the Jets last year. I think he saw a, a very small amount of playing time, but now he is going to be a uh, Understudy to Russell Wilson, well, and probably a few other quarterbacks after Russell Wilson, yeah. but he'll be there. All right, so we are joined today by Tiffany Haas, who is wife of Marty Haas, who played at BYU, and then mom to both Tyler and TJ. And <laughs> yes. TJ just got back from his mission and will be joining the team this season. He did. So exciting. We wanted to talk to Tiffany and ask her a few questions about TJ, about her family and her experience. Yes, so. we are so happy to have you on. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Um, well, thanks for having me, question too. question that we wanted to ask you, um, what is TJ going to bring to the team next year, personality-wise and with his game? You know, TJ is, he's a leader, and he's a fierce, fierce competitor. And I think, you know, I, I obviously I've never watched TJ play college basketball yet, but, um, you know, as a ninth grader, still in junior high, I watched him um, – you know, start on the varsity team as a ninth grader. And he never, he was never intimidated by, you know, the older players. And he, he just from day one was able to come in and compete and, and be a leader, even when he was a younger, you know, a younger player. So I think he'll bring um, leadership right from the beginning, you know, even as a, even even as a freshman. And what are his, strengths on the court okay what I think TJ brings is he can make others look good he sees he sees what others need and he jumps in and 
Like if he can see he needs scoring, he can score. If he can see that maybe he's off that night, he's a great passer. He, you know, he's just a competitor and he um, fills whatever role that the team needs to win, you know, and he's always kind of done that. You know, one night he'll be a really great scorer and the next night he's, you know, he's got a lot of assists. He's, he's great at both. So he's pretty well-rounded. Yes, always yeah. good. So I wanted to ask you, I have two little boys, and so I'm curious, what was the dynamic like with Tyler and TJ growing up? Was it more competitive, collaborative? What was that like? You know, I would say definitely more collaborative. Um, they're four years apart, and, uh, you know, TJ was always the little brother and has that advantage that he – he always wanted to play with his big brother. And, you know, one of the things that Ty, Ty was a great big brother. He always let TJ tag along. He always let TJ play in his basketball games. He, he just was very, he was, he doted on his little brother, which was a great advantage for TJ. But also TJ was one that, um, he just believed he should be out there playing with his big brother. Like, he just had that advantage, you know, like I'm, I'm as good as you are and you need to let me in the game. So, um, but they, they're, they were always really close. Um, they still are, you know, they're very close brothers. They're, they're best friends. Um, they rely on each other for advice. They're each other's biggest fans. Um, you know, out on the court though, it's definitely been competitive. I've watched the two of them play one-on-one -on -one and, it's it's gotten pretty heated. Um, Who wins more of those games? <laughs> oh man! You know what? Uh, I don't know. Oh. I, I don't know. Pretty I don't know. know. Pretty even. <laughs> I think it's I think it's pretty even. Yeah, I think it's pretty even. They're they're they really are. Um, they really are have helped. They've helped each other grow up and get better. And um, I think as they compete with one another, they know each other's weaknesses and strengths. And so when they play one-on-one, -on -one, they, you know, I think they help each other get better. So so uh, do, you, do you see them practice a lot and see them pushing each other in certain yeah. areas? And Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does Marty get in on that action too? You know, I think <laughs> he used to years ago, but now he just kind of stays out of it. And, <laughs> You know, they have been so blessed to have a dad that would do anything for those two. It's, you know, he's he's the one getting up early in the morning with them and, you know, helping them every step of the way. And he's very knowledgeable about basketball and he's helped them so much. They're, they're very blessed to have their dad. So, okay. Yeah. So the next question we wanted to ask you is what is TJ like off the court? So we don't. We don't know him all that well, just as BYU fans who don't yeah. follow him too closely as Lone Peak. So what is he like off the court, and what is a trait that he has that most fans wouldn't know about? Well, okay. So if you've ever watched Tej on the court, he's super competitive, really kind of a fierce, fiery player. You know, he's pretty emotional. He's, But, you know, off the court, he's pretty humble and kind and has a super kind heart um can be quiet at times which you, you just you don't see that difference you know it's funny because we had this lady come over from his mission and she was she has only seen the, the side of tj as a missionary and so she's only seen that humble you know kind sweet kind of quiet guy and we showed her a little bit of, you know, him playing basketball. And she was, like, blown away. She couldn't believe it was the same guy. What's it like for you as his mom to watch watch his games or to watch Tyler's games? Uh, you know what? It's it's so fun. It's It gets pretty intense. Like, there have been times. Like, I remember when Ty was playing up at Gonzaga, um, you know, what, two years ago. And we were we had a chance. We were beating them. And I couldn't take it. I had to go up and I spent the last five minutes up in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. I couldn't even, I couldn't even, I had to like plug my ears and I couldn't even listen to it. It was, it's, it can be very kind of nerve wracking, but um, it's fun too. It's so fun to watch them out there and knowing that, you know, they've worked really hard and, and just to enjoy their, 
you know, all the hard work pay off. It's fun. I like it. You know, TJ is different because TJ plays a little bit more like Marty. Um, he's quicker and, you know, he just kind of has that. He, he reminds me a lot of watching Marty play. Um, it's up-tempo and, and it's fun to watch. I, TJ is a fun player. So they're, they're, it's, it's all enjoyable but can be it can be a little nerve wracking at times. Yeah. And I'm sure you experienced like the highest of the highs with him. Like it was probably yeah. so fun with Ty after that win at the kennel, but I mean, there's yeah. low lows too. Oh yeah. You see all of that. You do. And it is, it's, you ha and you know what? You're, you're exactly right. You have to enjoy the highs because there are plenty of lows. And you know what, as a mom, my role I think is just to, you know, you just let them know you love them no matter what. And it's not about, for me, truly, it's not about the, the basketball part of it. You know, I see them as just boys and, you know, just normal guys. And so you do, you, you enjoy the highs, but the lows come too. And you have to be able to support them and get through all of that as well. So Because I think as a fan, it's really easy to forget that they are just guys. And the fans can take those losses really hard. But I yeah. think that they forget that no one takes those losses harder than oh. those boys who are just boys. So that's a good reminder so that everyone needs to go easier on them. It's so true. It's so true. You don't even realize how hard they take it and how it's tough. Those those losses are hard. So um, so we wanted to know if you have a favorite story of TJ's that you could share with us. Yeah. Okay. I, ha I have to tell you, I have so many of TJ. Like he was such a funny little kid. Just, <laughs> he, anybody that knew TJ as a little boy, he was this little cute redhead that thought he was, thought he could play with anybody, thought he was as good as anybody. Didn't matter if they were 10 years older than he was. But the story that kind of cracks me up is I remember um, Tyler was playing down in Las Vegas and we happened to be playing Michael Jordan's son's team. Mm -hmm. And when we walked in the gym, like everybody, you know, everybody's, you know, panning around to see where Michael Jordan is. And everybody knows he's over sitting in this corner and he has all of his guys around him and, um, you know, protecting him so that nobody could get near him. And TJ was like, I'm going over to sit by Michael Jordan. And, and I was like, um, please. Nobody's getting close to Michael Jordan. Like he's got his, he's got his guys protecting him. And so, you know, Marty was coaching and Ty was playing. And as the game kind of went on, I realized that I didn't know where TJ was. Oh, no. And so I am looking around and of course, everybody knows exactly where Michael Jordan is. And I look and there's TJ literally sitting right behind Michael Jordan, <laughs> just with the biggest smile on his face, like, of course, I'm sitting right. He wants to sit by me, you know. It, he just was that type of kid. He just was a funny little fiery redheaded kid. That <laughs> did you say how old he was here? He was okay. So Ty was he was probably in the fourth grade. Oh wow! <laughs> and I don't even know how we got past all of those guys. I just he figured it out. That's TJ for you, you know. So, so. even from that really young age, he was uh, he's got oh, no fear, fearless. Yeah, no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, such a fun little kid. Such a cute little kid. Um, I think the last thing we wanted to ask you was we share we're a little update about Tyler. He had a great game. Uh, was it last night? Did he play last yeah, night? Yesterday, yes. 24 yeah, they, yes. points, was it? Yeah, I think 20, 20 points. Yeah, I did really 20 well. 20 points, 24 minutes. Yeah. So yes. That's what it was. Yeah. So we just wanted to know, um, how is he doing in Spain? How are he and his wife? Yeah, they're doing great. You know, they're, they're of course, they're in northern Spain, and they're just, they're so happy. They're, they're like on this prolonged honeymoon. <laughs> I know, seriously. So, I know. <laughs> Just traveling around Europe, and they're, they're really happy. They're doing great. Their team could be doing better. Their team hasn't had the best year, but you know, which is a little bit of a struggle. But they're loving it. They're they're in a beautiful place, and they're having so much fun. So they come home in a couple of weeks. Oh, fun. So, Do you get to go over and visit? Yeah. We haven't yet. We haven't. I think maybe next year we might go. 
because Ty served in the Philippines. Is he picking up Spanish? Have they picked up Spanish? Uh, you know what? They are. They're taking they in his contract. They had a they have a Spanish tutor that comes and teaches them. I think like once a week. And yeah, they are. Uh, Tyler especially is because he has to kind of learn it for you know for the basketball court. Yeah. So that helps a lot. But you know, in Spain, at least in the city they are in. They, everybody speaks Spanish to them. They, you know, we lived over in Europe and we were in Belgium and I couldn't even, like people just automatically could tell I was American and would just speak English to me. But where Tyler and Summer, where they are, they don't speak a lot of English ever. So they kind of, you kind of have to learn it, which is great. They want to. Thank you so much yes. for talking with us. We appreciate it so much. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, good luck to TJ's. He's getting ready yes. for the season. Very excited to watch him. Thank you. Well, that was really great having Tiffany on. So uh, cool. She is the perfect fan, just a really sweet example of a player's mom. So we are glad she was able to come on, and we look forward to um, talking to hopefully someone from each of the new kids that we have coming on the team. We have someone we're going to talk to about, Stephen Bayo, and um, hopefully we'll get someone with Yoli Childs. Yeah, kinda. that's true. Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, Getting into Talk of the Town this week, the big news that we've been looking forward yes. to forever is that Eric Mika's home. All three of them. They're finally all back. Home pick three are back. Yeah. Um, so Eric tweeted out, home sweet home, feels good to be back with a picture of him and his family at the airport. So <laughs> Wearing shirts to spell out, welcome home. He looks home. good. I like his nice Italian suits that he's been yes, wearing Yes, goodness. He and... is dressed well. Yeah, he looks good. Um, so. We got an Instagram post from Nate. So he saw Nate the day he got... Well, no, this wasn't the day he, he got the back. Day the day after we decided. Um, he said, Big E is home, and it was great catching up. Excited to watch him in the coming years. Aren't we all, Nate? Yeah, understatement there, Nate. Um, and then also Eric is back on Instagram. So if you want to follow him, he's at Big E12. O N E T W O. Yep. One, two. Well, yeah, he wants you to give him a so, follow. Yeah, um, do it. He also, the night he got home, he did meet up with TJ and Nick, and we got that picture that we shared on our Twitter and our Facebook, but we'll put that up again for good measure because who doesn't love to see those three together? Yeah. Even and though that, two out of three of them are wearing red, there is a little confusion about that. I don't think they thought about it as much as everyone else is thinking yeah, about sure. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if you're not excited for Eric to be back, you should be, especially to have him back on social media because I tweeted about it. Like, oh, yeah. He is hilarious and has lots of antics and stuff and will be really entertaining during the He's season a, on the court and off. They gave superlative awards for the team. He would be class clown. So. Yeah. We're looking forward to lots of Talk the Town stuff from Eric. <laughs> what else do we have? So. Um, just wanted to mention that he, his girlfriend mm-hmm. from before the mission, she got called to the same mission. She got back, mm-hmm. I think a few months before he did, posted a picture with Eric. So yeah. happy to have my BFF back home. So BFF. We'll see where that goes. Sorry. We're, we're expecting a, a pretty quick um, courtship and engagement here, but we could be totally off base. Maybe they're not even back together, but they, I don't know. They I have ship seen them, each other. So oh my gosh. They should be. Oh dear. Okay. Um, speaking of courtships, engagements, weddings, we had a wedding this past yeah. weekend. Nick Emery got married and Eric was able to be there. So we have this Instagram post from Jackson Emery and he did just a little uh, pic collage of a bunch of people that were in the wedding party in his cute little family. Yep, including one with all the groomsmen, which mm-hmm. you'll see one Zach Selyus in there. Yeah, we were kind of thinking that um, TJ and Eric might be groomsmen, but yeah, we they know. weren't, yeah. and Zach was. So uh, shows you how close they were. Worked his way into the elite group right there. Uh, yeah. Yes, and then we have a picture tweeted out from someone named Zach Sandberg, who uh, says that he was back with the Lone Peak Trio at the wedding, and uh, there they are. Another pick of those. I can't get enough of those three together. I can't either. So. Oh, man. It's going to be fun. Um, keeping with the wedding theme, yes. Ty Detmer tweeted out that his oldest daughter got married. So Callie Detmer right there. So this picture of her with the crossbow, though, whatever that is. I'm not Whoa. even going to. It's I don't... cool. <laughs> she, I'm scared of her, but that's I, really yes, cool. Yes, me too. Um, <laughs> so back to our friend Zach, who, like we said, we're going to cherish every post we get from him because now it's we're 17 days away from when Zach leaves. 16, 16, I think, yeah. And uh, it was his dad's <sighs> birthday, and he said, this is the best coach I've ever had, but not just in basketball, but every aspect of life and growing up. Um, that his dad is his best friend. Just a really sweet tribute to his dad there. So 
Hashtag dad jokes. <laughs> he does love those. He'll retweet some uh, good dad jokes from this I random account from time jokes. to time. Um, so we've been keeping an eye on Brig. We've been keeping know. an eye on, on all the relationship statuses for you. Yeah, so Brig has a girlfriend now. We were wrong about this one. Well, we weren't yeah. wrong. We don't think he had a girlfriend, but now he but does. But he does now, and she's beautiful, and she's oh a gosh. model. She's literally a model. So like, go follow her Instagram. Yeah. If we and can find a link, we'll put it out there. But. It was her birthday, and they're kind of the cutest thing ever. I ship them, speaking of shipping uh, people. Same. So. <laughs> I like them a lot. Um, so. Also, sticking with people that we ship, Tanner and Alexa, the Tenexa. power couple of power couples at BYU. She is going to Seoul, South Korea. Yes, South Korea is where she got drafted. I, yeah, is that I the right terminology? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this is so cool. I love this so much because I'm thinking it's probably volleyball season over there is probably around the same time as football season. Mm -hmm. So for her to be able to go off and do that Mm -hmm. while Tanner's competing here for BYU, I think is is cool that I think Tanner's probably her biggest supporter in that, that he wants her to live her dream and Yeah, yeah, and he posted that on Instagram and I think he's really proud of her. So uh, that's going to be a busy, busy fall for them. Um, But they posted another cute Instagram. uh, What'd they do? Hit up a Dodgers game this weekend? Looks like it. So she got drafted. They got to go to some ballparks. Yeah. She said, what a great, what a fantastic weekend. Yeah, that's, um, can't complain. Uh, Excited for their wedding. (laughs) Coming up. Yes. Um, we got a quick update from Ralph Hawes. Yes. Which I'm pretty sure is... No, it's Ralph. Okay, it's Ralph. And <laughs> it was about Tyler Hawes' game against Real Madrid. He's playing over in Spain, if you forgot. 24 minutes, 20 points on 6 of 7 from 2, 1 of 3 from 3, 5 of 6 free throws, 3 assists, 1 rebound. That sounds like a Tyler Hawes stat line. Not a bad night of work. Yeah, That's funny. Work There's a Real Madrid basketball game. There's also a team. There's also a Real Madrid soccer team. Did they play the soccer team? I'm pretty sure they weren't playing the soccer team. I don't know. If Either way, were, Ty had a good game. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. And we'll be talking, well, we just got an update from Ty's mom. Yes. So um, cool. Sticking with our graduated hoopsters, our BYU hoopster alumni, um, Kyle Collinsworth was in, he's in Vegas uh, preparing for the upcoming draft that I believe is in June. So him and his wife are apart, but it looks like she was able to go down and spend the weekend with him. The comments on there were pretty good. Yeah, and she is beautiful. So she Of is, course, yeah. you've got some dragon emoji going on down there. Yeah, always dragon references every time. Last thing I want to mention was that um, both Michael Wadsworth and Nate Carter were mm-hmm. named to the 2016 NFF Hampshire Honor Society, which is given to football players who maintain a 3.2 or better GPA during their entire playing career. I hardly did that, and I didn't play sports, so good for them. Yeah, good work, guys. <laughs> That's what's coming up next for Cougar Sports. We've got the volleyball tournament championship weekend, I guess. So they play Thursday, May 5th. Mm-hmm. So And that's they're out at Penn State, <clears throat> right? Yeah, East Coast. So I think that will be on BYU Radio is what they said. Mm-hmm. So uh, We wish them that. luck. So they are playing in the yeah. NCAA tournament. We have rugby. The national championship is coming up this weekend. And that is not across the country. It is at Southfield. So show up. Um, It's at 2 p.m. I think you have to buy tickets through the Varsity Cup website. They'll be playing Cal, and we hope to get our uh, fifth national title in in a row. Rugby expert, fifth? Okay. We've (laughs) confirmed that with an expert. (laughs) Great. And then baseball this week is home home against UVU tonight at 6 o'clock. And then That last one got rained out. Right. But I think that one's rescheduled for at UVU later this month. Okay, cool. And then they'll play Pepperdine Thursday through Saturday at Pepperdine. So Beautiful I, campus. I don't know about you. I caught the game against Gonzaga on Saturday. So the series was tied 1-1. And BYU was down 4 nothing in the ninth inning. Which and is a big deficit. Yeah. And it, and it was raining and it was cold. And mm. I, I didn't think they were going to pull it out. But they did. They pulled out the 5-4 comeback. Put on their rally caps. I'll try to find that picture where was it Maverick Buffalo it was, who had like the 37 caps on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great name. Uh, but it was exciting. That was one of the first walk baseball off. games I've seen this season, and it was a good one. Nothing I like stuck a it out rally walk-off win to turn you into a baseball fan. It does not Seriously. get more exciting than that. Yeah, so <laughs> go check out that game on tonight if you can. Yes. Should be a pretty good one. Yes. All you. right, this week's episode is brought to you by Caesar. All hail. And... <laughs> 
by the Yankees and especially our favorite Yankees fan. We love the Yankees. We love the Yankees. (laughs) May you always stay loyal to the white and blue. For Jess, I'm Mary. We'll see you next week.